Hey y'all, come on in. Welcome back. I'm going to start a project. Got a belt for a co-worker. So I wanted to, uh, I'm going to try to do one where you guys are in from the very beginning. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually cut the uh, belt blanks out of side of leather. What I'm using I showed this in one of my other videos. It's just a stripper. He wants it two inches wide, so that's what I've got it set on. My wife's going to help me. So let's cut out a couple of pieces. And this heavier. This is 7 8 ounce leather, so it's a little tough to get it started sometimes. You can pull the end of it up out of the... see where it's trying to go up underneath. Pull it out. Would it help if we want to flat have a solid yeah. surface? If it wasn't so big, that'd be great. Yeah, well, I noted that, yes. It's a you gotta really, really hold on to this heavy one. Okay, let me see if I can get it out of there. Right, there you go. Now just use pliers there and hold on to the end of it. Once you get it started, it's not that bad. Put on this heavier belt grade leather. It is a booger. All right, Judy, kind of roll that up a little bit, that end up a little bit now, so I can get all the way down to the where I need to be. Roll it up a little more. Hold on back here. Rosie, move. Hey, quit. Good, right there. Okay. All right, well, I need to do this one more time. there to help support the middle of it. Oh, okay. Number 
two. I'll grab my jam duster now. Pull it more that direction. Come on. Kind of curl it. See how it's wanting to dig inside there? Twist it up a little bit. Till I can, there you go. married mm -hmm. and I used to do this by myself and I'd get a C-clamp and clamp it to the end of my table <laughs> <laughs> where I could pull against that C-clamp. I had to. You have to do something. Smaller, smaller leather ain't that big a deal. But this thicker stuff. That's a bugger. up folks and go put it away and I'll be right back. Oops, camera got moved. I don't know how, don't know how much of that y'all missed. I'm sorry if you did. Cat was pulling on the microphone cord. Oh, we had, we had somebody who thought it was a toy. Ooh, I'm out of breath. Thank you for your help, Judy. You're welcome. I'm resting my back. Do what? So I'm resting my back. Back. I don't know my back still got sore, but it got sore. So. Yeah. All right. 
I think I'm going to kind of leave you guys sitting off to the side on this, at least for now. Because I'm going to have to be flopping these things around. And I don't want to bang you. All right, now that we got that done. Doing a rodeo as a kid back in younger years in high school. I thought that was bad enough trying to hang on to them. But they're reminding me. Speaking of that, I don't want to go back to this reminding again. Now remember, adults working with children, this is a razor blade in there. A razor blade. So you want to be real. But this thing has a scale on it. You want to be careful when you're just around kids. Just understand what you're working with. But this thing has a scale on one end of it. And it's flat smooth all the way up on both sides of it. This is your guide. I hope you got to see me trying to pull it through there. But you just pull this through to get your width, whatever width you want. And that's all it does. Oh, Judy, would you hand me those? Never mind, I'll get them. Uh, get my pliers back over here. Said I used to hook one end of those hides to a C clamp on my previous layout table. I had this desk here out in the open in the middle of my room at that time. And I could tie that hide down to the table, keep it from, let the table hang on to it. But I'll keep various thicknesses of hides on hand just from my more popular stuff that I'm going to be using a lot of. You can order these in blanks from Tandy. I think I've already said that. Uh, but now to get down to the customer. I'm five foot tall. And he can, with me standing straight up flat footed, He can very comfortably rest his elbow on my head. And he just keeps going up and getting bigger from there. But my name is also Keith, so to distinguish between the two of us, I'm little Keith and he's big Keith. <laughs> and he's, he's big. <laughs> oh, he's big. If you never did play pro football, I think you should have. There's just a lot of him. So anyway, he wanted a belt. The ones that they sell now at the stores and stuff they're just they're just a single layer belt and they're not even they're not even this thick this is seven eight ounce leather so talking with him he asked me if I could make him a belt that would last him a while I well I think I can so we got to talking. And what we came up with 
what I'm going to make for him. Is what we're going to do is I'm going to double up on the thickness. So he showed me what the one that he has now is wanting to roll over, similar to this with him. And then of course that reduces the thickness of, or the the strength of it. So he's got a uh, waist size or a pant size, folks. Now this is how I lay them out. He's got a pant size, not his waist size, of 42. I want to know what the pant size is. That's what people don't realize is that material that's going around the waist to make those pants is adding a diameter to that length. On a normal belt up on the buckle end of it, I would add three inches. That's where the buckle's going to be and that, that allows you room for the snaps. Remember it's going to be folded over around that buckle. So I'll do three inches up on the buckle end. Here's my pants size of 42. Now since I'm doing two layers of this belt grade leather. I'm adding an additional 10 inches out to the tongue of it. The reason why I'm doing that is because I would normally add seven. If I'm just using one thickness, I would normally just add seven inches. Punch the holes in the tongue for it out there. But since I'm doubling these up, Then I'm going to add another three inches to the length of that buckle to accommodate the thickness of these. Because it's going to take up that much. Or not maybe not take up all of it, but it's going to take up quite a bit of it. So he wants it stained black, just his initials in it, and that's it. I'm not going to be putting, putting any snaps in the buckle end of this one because he has a problem with them wanting to stay snapped. He just pulls them out when he's wearing it. So um, I'm going to take the prettier of the two pieces. You can see down here on this end, I've got some marks on it, actually where the cow probably got up against a wire fence or something like that. So this, this piece here, I'm going to reserve for the back side. So it'll go over like that. This piece will go on here like this. And this is how I'm going to wind up. This will give me a finished surface on both sides, or smooth. This will be the hair side. This is going to be your flesh side. So I'll glue them together like so. And then I'm, I'm going to stitch everything on here, even up around the buckle. So after I told him what I had in mind, he said go for it. Seems to think this is going to be something that will stay with him for a little while. After making what's called tack, it's the harnesses and things like that for livestock. I've improvised on some of that over the years. So I think once I, once we get this done, then uh, he'll have a belt that's going to be going to be quite a while or lasting quite a while, I hope. Here's the buckle I'm going to be using. Called a roller buckle. 
two inches in diameter. I didn't think I could even find a buckle that was two inches in diameter. But I found one at Tandy, so I ordered it. These are way heavier duty than uh, any of the others. I just really, really like them. So anyway, uh, the first process or the first step that I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to have to get it wet or at least a portion of it in here. I'm going to find the center of it. And to do that, I'm going to take one piece of it. This is going to be my outside, the piece that will be exposed. So the other one, I'm just going to roll it up and set it off to the side for the time being. The uh, mittens are going to... I told him I'd try to get this done for him this weekend. So what I'll do now before I measure anything out is I'll come in and move you guys back a little bit and get my drawer, drawer open. pencil. So what I'll do now is I'll come in and uh, uh, I'm just going to square this end off to start with. That way I've got a straight line. This square that I got, uh, it's craft square is what it's called. But what it allows you to do, since I'm stitching this, I just want to straight in down there. I'm not going to have any snaps or nothing. But these, these will help you like framing a house or whatever. Uh, it'll help you get a good clean straight line, which is what you want. I guess you, you could probably find those squares somewhere else. Uh, Hobby Lobby may have them or someplace like that. But now I need one inch. Will be my center line. It's going to be right here. And then I'll come down my three inches. I'll make my other mark. Come in and get my one inch. And this is where I'll actually cut the hole for the uh, tongue of the buckle to go up through. Oh, where is one inch? Is that light? Ah, uh, come on. Light. Get down here where I can work with you. I'll be right there. Then I'm going 
going to come down one more inch since I'm stitching this. Said I'm doing this a little differently than what I would with a conventional belt because I'm going to need the strength. I'll come down to here. Put my straight edge down. And this is where I'll cut the slot for the buckle to go under and then it'll fold over just like so and then I'm going to have all of this material right in here to stitch it down now the way I'll put this thing together to get the additional layer now since I'm going to be doubling them up I'll bring this layer in and actually butt it up to the back side of the buckle And I'll stitch all of this together right in here and then I'll stitch the full length of it just all the way down I'll do a crisscross pattern on it on the stitching simply because it's going to be two of these thicknesses and just going to be glued together but I want the extra strength of the stitching may sound like overkill maybe it is but I've got some to my knowledge I've got some livestock stuff out there that uh, probably 20-25 years old now And still good so uh, I'll show you all the tool that I used to cut the, uh, the slot in there for the buckle if I can remember what I did with it The last belt I did, Mr. Calvert's belt, I just ordered a belt blank from Tandy and uh, it came with the snaps and that hole already pre-cut. But I did that so I could demonstrate the things, that, the different things that you can buy from Tandy without having to order a bunch of tools. Hey, you had it earlier. I saw it. Well, I set it down though, Judy. Did you set it in your drawer? Well, I thought I organized it and put it up here in one of these drawers. But you know how that goes. Here it is. Here it is. Yeah, she <laughs> she was making a comment there that my tools I have usually two or three of every tool that I own in my toolbox for my mechanic stuff because I will invariably it'll get laid down and then I've found by the time I lose the third one I've generally found one or both or the other two so it works out pretty good but that was just out of self-defense. Get this back up. 
right there. And this is it. It's just got a oval piece to it. It is sharpened on the end out here. So it will also cut you. I'll come in with it. back you guys up because I'm going to put it on the anvil and really get ugly with this thing. Think about getting a heavier hammer just for when I'm cutting out these blanks because they can be a booger. Get my little anvil out. you guys can still see okay take your belt back, lay it up here get stuff out of the way and then I'll just try to center it on my pencil marks You can look at each end of it and kind of get it pretty well centered. Come on, baby. pieces will go up inside of the cavity and then as it gets full it's got a little ejection part back here where it just cuts out or it just dumps them out matter of fact that one just did dump out I really encourage you folks to get you one of those little hobby anvils. They just make life way a lot easier for you when you're doing stuff like this. But there's your hole. portion of your buckle will come up through there so when you fold it over now here's the loop part golly this stuff is stiff there's your loop part of it. it's got a real nice clean hole where your buckle goes in If you do uh, decide to buy uh, complete sides of leather, then uh, find you a place. All of mine is stored in a uh, secondary bedroom closet where it's climate controlled and it stays dark. But one of the things that does happen to leather if it gets exposed to direct sunlight before it's sealed is it will in fact sunburn just like we do. Mm -hmm. And I'll 
come in with my with my shears now. These are shears that are made for cutting very heavy leather, canvases, things of that nature. So I have them dedicated only to my leather. I don't know why, but if you use them on something else, it will dull them in a hurry. But it's not taking hardly any effort at all for it to cut through this leather here. A lot of flip-flopping when you're doing a belt. So now I've got my squared off end. Normally if I'm on any other belt, I'd, uh, I'd come in, I'd find my center, and using my protractor, I'd come in and just make a radius. Not leave it squared off like this, but since this is going to be getting stitched in, then I want it like this. So when I slide that other piece up in here, then I can come out here to the edge and put in a real nice big heavy stitch through all three layers. The weakest point of this belt then is going to be right here. And I just don't see that happening for a very long time, having any issues with that. So, now that I have that, get the 42. I come all the way out here to the very end of it. Some folks say, you know, come into here because this is going to get folded under. But what you're losing sight of is you still have your buckle out here. So when, it, when you put that buckle on, you're actually going to be, this is going to be from here to the end of your belt. So I'll come out here. I'm going to have to measure this a little differently because I've got some added length out here at three and a half inches. So I'll come in. Uh, take that three and a half. So that leaves me about a half. So I need 42. So actually 41 and a half to get my 42. Oh. Going to tape measure lock. the end. I'll come down now and I'll get my 42. Now I'll go to the center of where that buckle's going to go. Uh, 
that 42 inches is going to be the center hole out on the tongue of the belt. So I'll come back in now. 21. So it should be 21 inches now from where the buckle actually attaches to the belt. Actually, with the added part down there. I still need to go down to the very end of the belt. And 42. I said that wrong. I'll come in and do 21. Now it should be 21. And 21. That way, when this folds over, you see what I'm talking about. If I'd have taken that measurement from here to get the center, for the initials, then I'll fold that back. You've still got this additional space out here that you need to account for because your belt, the, the hole is going to be out here. Anyway, that's just how I do it. I hope that that helped. So yeah, if I didn't have that additional half inch out there, if I'd have rounded the tip of it off, then I'd be at 20 and a half from where the buckle's gonna be. And then I'm 20 and a half on the other end. As you can see there's my, no, you're not gonna be able to see. Got my hand in the way. where my pencil mark is. I don't know if you can see that or not. It'll be 20 and a half on each end. So this is gonna be where the initials will go. And if you want to double check yourself, what I'll do, I'll 
I'll just fold it up like this and I'll approximate amount about where the uh, where the buckles gonna go I have about this much distance here where your buckles gonna be sticking out up here now this is gonna be your center hole I'll approximate that and then when you turn it over if you hold that out in front of you straight then where your name is if you're doing a name should be straight across from you from your marks which is about where I'm at but anyway that's how I will center up a belt So this one's getting a little bit long. Let me, uh, this video's getting a little bit long. Let me um, get this one out to you. And then uh, when I bring you back for part two, we'll set the initials in it. And then uh, What I can do is I can go ahead and set the initials. I'll just get this area. Since it's going to be stained black, I'm not too concerned about watermarks in the uh, in the leather because it's going to black will cover up everything. But what I'll do is I'll get this area here wet where the initials are going to go. And then uh, we can move down here to the tongue portion of it. And uh, we'll go ahead and punch these holes out here. So I'm gonna have to do them in both, uh, both layers. So uh, we'll do that. As always, we like to uh, end the video. Uh, don't be mean. If you're not willing to treat Jesus that way, then let's not treat each other that way. We're here to have fun, learn some things, and uh, hopefully, make, hopefully make some stuff. So with that, till next time, we're going to punch some holes. I'll see you on the next one.